watching The Wizard of Oz later with some friends of mine on a color TV. And we got through that opening scene, and right before Dorothy opens the door, I kind of, oh, wait, wait, oh, you're, what you're going to see is... And the guys I, were, I was with kind of went, hey, we know. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes over a period of time, we become dull dull to the beauty and the joy that is all around us. And we can go, yeah, whatever. I mean, I think the same thing happens at the communion table. I mean, you don't know how many times I have stood behind the table and I have said, God invites you. In the fullness of God's love, God invites you to come and participate in the gifts of bread and cup. And I've looked out and I've seen somebody go, yeah. <sighs> I understand it's early, but do we not hear what we are, what we're proclaiming? The beauty of God's love, the fullness of God's colors that are being extended to us and are allowing the beauty of each and every one of us to be seen by others. Today you're invited to come to the table to experience the joy and love of our God in bread and cup. Come and participate, knowing that you were invited. Come. Jesus sits at the table breaking the bread with his friends teaching what he is able with all his life on earth do this in remembrance of 
and under military rule for hundreds of years. The world seemed really gray. And one of the things that the Romans figured out was you need to let the people come together in some way. And so historians tell us that almost everyone in that culture, from the poorest of the poor to the richest, would gather a couple of times a month in their guilds or in their social classes and share a meal. They were almost like we would call them supper clubs. And so they would recline together around a table, the highest stature in the beginning or in the places of honor, and they would share a meal. And the one requirement the Romans had was that in that meal or at the end of the meal before they went to the program, they would all lift a glass and toast the Caesar, the emperor. And so when Jesus gathered his followers in that upper room and gathered them around a table, that was something they had done hundreds, maybe thousands of times in their life. But something was different about this meal. <laughs> First, Jesus took an ordinary loaf of bread as part of the dinner and he blessed it and he broke it and said, this is my body that will be broken for you. And then when it came to that time, a time that they had all experienced many times before, that an ordinary cup of wine, we use grape juice, was raised, they didn't hear anything about the Caesar, the emperor at that point. Instead, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it and said, this is my blood that will be shed for you and for all so that your sins will be forgiven. And he said to them, whenever you gather after this point to share a meal, remember me. He had committed treason right there in that meal, a treason that would ultimately lead to his death. But you see, in that act, Jesus was ushering in the light the light that let us see what seemed gray all around us was actually vibrant and full of great color. Jesus was teaching us to see with kingdom eyes, to see God's kingdom on earth all around us and to see it for all of its vibrant colors. And so this morning as we gather at the table, I'd like for you to come to the table with kingdom eyes because this table is set for all and all are welcome at this table. And if you're unable to come forward to the table, we just ask that you raise your hand and we'll come serve you right where you are. And as you come forward to this table, as you notice the vivid colors all around us in the people around you and what they're wearing in this sanctuary, Remember the light of the world that came to bring those colors to us and came so that not only would we see those colors, but we would help the world see the light of the world. As you come forward, we'd also invite you to bring a portion of the many offerings that you've received and your blue cards and put them in these baskets. Let's pray together. Dear everlasting God, we come to this table in all of you. All the glorious things you have given us, yet sometimes we take for granted. Lord, as we come to partake in this meal prepared for us, may we act as your body of Christ, and the shades of gray vanish, and the true colors come vividly shining through all of us to see. Father, not only did you give us the beautiful colors of the rainbow, 
but you also gave us the prayer of your Father in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. Sunday, I find some, some moment of joy in the worship service, something that touches me, speaks to me. Often it is at the communion experience. There's something about, very, it's a very humbling experience in my opinion, to be there and to serve another human being. Smiles, words shared, just a glance, their gifts. And as I get to see the full spectrum of God's beauty in, in your faces, it just reminds me to look elsewhere as well, because it's there, all around us. 
And yet there are so many people, sometimes because they made the choice, other times it wasn't by their own decision, but they see the world around them in grace. And they need a little help. They need a friend to walk alongside them and just to be good to them, to be a source of that love that is just amazing, beautiful, and full of light and color. My hope and prayer and my belief is that you all are that to one another and to the world around us. May we be empowered to be such people. Here at Cypress Creek Christian Church, every Sunday we extend an invitation, an invitation into this covenant community, but an invitation into a life with Christ. If you wish to respond to that invitation, you can do one of two things. You can come forward as we're singing our song of discipleship, bringing your blue card with you, or speak to one of our pastoral staff or elders immediately after the service. Now, if you're able, I invite you to stand and let us all join our voices on this song.
Why not here? Why not now? I like that, I like that language. I want to share some things happening in the life of our congregation. Uh, first of all, the ministry team, which is people that give leadership to different programs and ministries in the life of the congregation, chairpersons, meeting today at noon or as close to noon as we uh, get out of the 11 o'clock service in the activity room just to do some future planning over the next uh, nine months or so. Hope to see you there. Today at 4 o'clock, is that right, youth? 4 o'clock is the stockholders' dinner. If you purchase stock for the youth mission trips, they're having a dinner tonight. Come and join them. They're going to be showing pictures, telling stories. Uh, it should be a wonderful occasion. That also will be in the activity room. Um, Kristen's over there, I think. Come on over here. I think some of you maybe have already met Kristen Davenport. But Kristen is coming on as our new director of youth ministry. She is, uh, after a wonderful but chaotic summer, she is stepping into that position, jumping in with both feet, and we are thankful for her presence with us. And I ask a favor, keep her in your prayers. That's a good group of folks and all the other youth as well, but uh, she still needs prayers, working with them. Uh, but uh, also introduce yourself. Not once, not twice, not three, continue to do it. We are a, a large community of faith uh, worshiping in three separate worship services. But I'll invite her to step out with me at the close of the service and let you introduce yourself for the first time. A couple more announcements. Remind you about our continued prayer time in the chapel every Sunday morning. The time changes, but it goes out both in my uh, daily devotionals and in the highlights each week. And you can come in for about a 15-minute time of prayer led by some of our church elders. Next Sunday, we are going to be taking up a special offering for the CPA. Now, that is not those that work your taxes. CPA is the Coastal Plains area. That is the 50-some churches around Houston and just out in the suburbs. And it also is uh, our campground. Uh, Camp Gonzales. The fees that come in from all the camp uh, campers doesn't come close to covering the cost of camp. So I hope next week you'll be generous in support of the CPA and our camping program. And finally, uh, if you've not put your face, your beautiful faces, on the online pictorial directory, we need you to do that. But if you need some help, Larry Lipton, who's often, well, he's up there right now doing some filming, but he'll be ready to take your picture and to help you get it up there. If you've not been to the online directory, you need to go and you need to check out the Froge family. I, what's great about it is you can change out your picture. And I've changed out my picture and you need to just go there and check it out. Maybe that will be an incentive to go to the online directory. I invite you to grab the hand of somebody close. Stretching across the aisle if you wish something that doesn't happen a lot in our world. God, we are a blessed people. We've been blessed and touched. We have fully experienced your love that comes to us in full spectrum. And we pray, God, that not only our eyes, but our hearts, our minds, the fullness of who we are, that we've been touched by that and better prepared to share that glorious vision with all the world. Now send us forth with your love. A love that knows no end. Amen.